Hi there, I'm Mr. Deulis, and I'm going to be guiding you through the first grade basic computer skills checklist. You can see that I've got it up right here, and I might bring it up, uh, just to refer to it as, as we go through. So first thing, check to see that the power button light is on. That power button usually has a symbol that looks something like this. It's a zero with a one right down the middle. And if it's not lit up, if the light is not on, press that button to turn the computer on. If the computer is on, but the screen is black, wake up the computer by hitting any key, any key, excuse me, or click your mouse button once. And in fact, usually if you just wiggle the mouse around, that usually wakes up the computer. Log on if you need to, and then as soon as you do that, open Microsoft Word. Now, if you notice, I already have Microsoft Word open here, but let me close it just, just to show you exactly how we do that. I have my Microsoft Word right here. You can either double click on that, or if you don't have an icon on your desktop, you can hit your start menu that's on the bottom left here, and you often will have uh, Microsoft Word if you don't see it in this list, you would have to go to All Programs and then choose it out of this list. I'm going to double click it from the desktop. Double click, two quick clicks and that will open it up. And so this is what your, uh, what your file is going to look like right off the bat. And just to make sure that you are familiar with the keyboard, here we have the uh, keyboard. Yours should look something like this. We have the uh, shift key here, control caps, and tab buttons here. With your mouse, if you click this button here, that's your left click. And if you click the button to the right of it here, that's in blue, that would be the right click button. In the middle, you often have a button that you can scroll up and down with. Uh, we're not going to work too much with that button today. Just the left and right click buttons. The left click button is the one in red. Right click button is the one in blue. Okay, let's move along. If we go back to our Microsoft Word, what we want to do is follow through our instructions. So as you go through each step, just kind of check through the, your uh, smiley face to show that you've done that. What we want to do is we want to click File, or if there is not a file, uh, we're going to click the Microsoft Office button. It's this sort of uh, button here that has four different color little squares to it, and we click that. We're going to click Save As, And we're going to change the file name to first grade computer file. We want to also put your name at the end of that. So we're going to have first grade computer file and then your first and last name. So just as an example, if my name were Bob Smith, I would put first grade computer file Bob Smith. And then once I do that, I can choose where I want to save it. So you are going to save this file wherever your uh, teacher asks you to, to save that. Personally, I'm going to be saving this to my desktop here. And then once I've chosen where to save it and I've named it properly, I'm going to hit save. There. Now I've changed the file name. And at any point in time, if I ever hit this little... Uh, save button up here, then it's just going to automatically save it, uh, resave it to that same location so that way all my changes are saved. Alright, so now that I'm here, I'm going to make sure that I click on the Microsoft Word document and I'm going to hit enter once to go to the second line. Type your full name on that second line and make sure that you use the shift key to capitalize your first name. So, for example, if we've got Bob Smith, I'm going to put Bob Smith. And just so you understand how I did that there, let me show you what I did is I had hit the shift key. And then while holding down the shift key, I also press 
the one button. And if you notice right there, there's a little exclamation point above the one, which tells you that if you hit the shift key and that button at the same time, you'll get the exclamation point. For example, if you wanted the, the money symbol, the dollar symbol right there, you would hit shift and the money uh, dollar symbol. But what we want is we want the exclamation point. So we're going to hit shift and the one button at the same time. All right, next we are going to highlight the name that you just wrote. Okay, so I'm going to be highlighting Bob Smith in my case. And to do that, I'm going to click the left mouse button and then I'm going to move the mouse so that way I can highlight the entire name and then I can let go of that button. Or another trick is to double or even triple click on the name. So let's say, for example, here, if I go up here, click once on the name, click twice, it's going to highlight just the, uh, the one word. And if I do three times, it does the whole line. The other way to do it would be to go over to one side of your name, hold down the left mouse button, and then drag across. And you see as I drag, it highlights the entire thing. And then I can let go. There you go. So I've highlighted the entire name. In my case, I'm highlighting Bob Smith. And what we're going to do now is we're going to change the font to Broadway. So we're going to go up here. This is the font. And you see if I just hold the cursor there, it comes up and says font. Right there, it says font. So we're going to change that font, and we're going to change it to Broadway. All right, so we've changed the font. But don't click anything else just yet. We still want to have that text highlighted, and we're going to change the font size as well. So we're going to go over here. This is the font size, and we want to change the font size to 16 point font. So we've changed it to size 16 font. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to hit the caps button because we're going to put a title on this, ba this page. So I'm going to hit the caps button. And the caps button, remember that is right here. Sometimes it says caps and sometimes it says caps lock. But in either case, we're going to hit that button. You just hit it once and let go. And then everything else that we type is now going to be in capitals. They're going to be big letters. So if we go back here, I'm going to hit my caps button. And you notice that a little symbol can just come up over here. That often happens. It doesn't always look the same for each computer. And then I'm going to select just above my name. I will be typing in all capital letters. But before I actually type anything in, I want to change what the font is going to look like. I want to change what this is really going to look like. So what I want to do is I first want to change the color of the text. And so if you notice, when I hover over this little symbol here, I have a little, a little text that says font color. And so I'm going to click the drop down menu here, and I'm going to choose either purple blue, or I'm sure I could find pink in there. I think I'm going to do purple. I also want to change the size of the font here. So I've got purple selected, but no, I also want to change it to 18 point font. And I'm also going to bold. So I click the bold button here and the underline button as well. So I want it to be bold, underlined, big, and purple. Then since this is my title, I also want it to be centered in the page. As it is, I have the left align button selected. I want to choose the center align button. So click that, and if you notice, it went to the center of the page. 
So now I'm going to title this as first grade computer file. So I'm going to put the one st space, and if you notice, it automatically puts the st up, and that's okay. I'm going to say grade, oops, computer file, and it should be in all caps. I'm going to hit the caps button again to deselect caps, that way not everything else is going to be in caps, and now I'm typing in lowercase. Click below your name and hit the tab button. In fact, what I might have to do is there is no spaces below my name yet, so I actually have my cursor to the right of my name, so I have to hit enter to make a new line. And now I have my cursor below my name. And I'm going to hit that tab button. Okay, so I've gone over uh, so that way I can start a, a proper paragraph that is spaced over. I'm going to use proper grammar to copy and complete this sentence. Blank is my favorite subject. Well, science is my favorite subject. Make sure you put a period there at the end to use proper grammar. And I actually don't want this to be in Broadway font. I would rather this be back into my original font of, let's select the font, actually. I mean, triple click. I selected the entire line, and I'm going to select Calibri, which was my original text. And I'm also going to go back to my original size, which is 11 point font. So let me choose the 11 point font. There we go. And I can select at the end of my sentence again. And I'm going to complete my statement with two more sentences. So you ha should have one space after each line, after each sentence, excuse me. And so I'm going to write, I like it when Mr. D does experiments. And if you misspell something, like I did here, you have the word experiments. I'm going to right click over the word. And if you notice, it gives me options as to what I might have been trying to say. So I'm going to click the first one because I was trying to write experiments. There we go. And of course I want to put another sentence in there. And I wrote that I learned that giraffes have very high blood pressure because they are so tall, which is completely true. Now, I don't want you writing the same thing as me. I want you to come up with a couple of sentences you can say about your favorite class that are true for you. I'm going to choose the Save button so that I can save my progress. And save now, save often. That's something that my teachers used to always tell me when I was a kid, and I should be telling that to you. Save now, save often. Because when you make some sort of mistake, you can always go back and reopen the file that you had last saved to. Okay, now we're ready to email this file to our teacher as an attachment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Internet Explorer. I'm going to go down to the bottom right here and click this little button in the bottom right because with Windows 7 that lets us just go straight to the desktop. And I'm going to choose Internet Explorer and open up my Internet Explorer. In the address bar, I'm going to choose gmail.com.
Okay, so I've on, already gone ahead and logged into my Gmail account. You're going to have to do the same by putting in your username and password to log into your Gmail account. Once you have your Gmail open, it should look something like this. And at that point, we are then going to hit the Compose button. So that's going to be right here. If we click Compose, we're going to have this little uh, message box show up. And we're going to have to first address who this is going to. So we're going to address the email to your teacher. If, for example, Ms. Baxter, if Mrs. Baxter was my teacher, I would put in her email. So I would put in oh, make sure you spell everything just right. And you have to put the at symbol, that's going to be the shift key, and then the number two button to put the at symbol. That's what this is right here, is that at symbol. It looks like this, it's an A, and then with a circle around it, that's your at symbol. And for her, if I were emailing Miss, Mrs. Baxter, that'd be at uh, championlocal.org. Okay, so if I hit the tab button, it's going to automatically sort of put this little box around it showing that it's, uh, it, hopefully that should be a, a good email address. If I hit the tab button again, it'll put me in the subject box, or you can just click it with your, with your mouse. In the subject line here, I'm going to put first grade computer file because I want to let her know what this is. So that way, when she gets the email, she'll know exactly what it is that I'm emailing her about. And then if I hit tab or simply click with your mouse button into the next box, that is going to be uh, where you compose your email itself. So in the body of the email, type your teacher's name. So for example, this would be Mrs. Baxter. Put a comma, and I'm going to write... Here is my computer file attached. Period and thank you. Comma. And I always like to hit enter. And in fact, I always like to have the thank you on its own line and then my name below. So remember, I'm Bob Smith today. So there we go. And let's see. I didn't capitalize the H in here, so I'm going to go back, select just past it, and hit the backspace button so that I can delete that H and put a capital. So if you make any mistakes, you can always go back and fix them. It's showing me a little red line underneath the misses. I'm going to right-click over that and see what it doesn't like about it. Not even exactly sure what I did wrong, but that looks like that's correct. Oh. Let me. Yeah, I'm not even sure what it doesn't like about it. Oh, now it likes it. Okay, well, let's move on. So now that I've got the uh, body of the email typed, now you must attach your file to the email before you can hit send, because otherwise you would be saying, you'd be saying, hey, here's this thing attached, but you didn't really attach anything, and that's always embarrassing when that happens. So let's go down to this little paperclip button, and it says Attach Files. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to go to, and what it often does is it will automatically bring up uh, recent items. So this is my first grade computer file that I had just saved. In fact, it even has my name there, so I can double check that that's it. I select it and hit open. If it doesn't come up, you might have to navigate to it, to where you, wherever you had saved it. So you're going to have to select it from your options here on the left. You're going to click open. And 
it inserts it in, it's now attached, and now I can click send. I'm going to wait to hit send. I'm not sure that Miss Baxter really wants that email from me, but hey, nonetheless. Once you've hit send, you're done. Now you can go ahead and close out everything. And I'm going to pretend that I hit send on that, but I'm not really going to personally. And I can close out my, my things here and even open up my file. I can go ahead and hit the X button in the upper right-hand corner. I'm not even going to lose my file because it's saved. And I'm done. I hope that uh, this was helpful for all of you. And you guys have a good one. Bye.